In this video, I'm playing backgammon versus the bot with my good friend, John Georgiou. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. My book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, you can contact me via email. My email address is in the description. Uh, again, it's my pleasure to have my good friend from the UK, Mr. John Georgiou. Thank you for joining me and welcome. Hi, Mr. Alex. How are you? Very good. Thank you for uh, thank you for asking. Um, it's evening time where you are, right? Yes, yes, it is. It's uh, the hop was eight at night, so it's a good time for me. Okay, good. Thank you for accommodating me. Uh, how have you been? Everything good? Yeah, I'm, everything's great. I wasn't expecting to get this opportunity so soon, but um, as you had someone drop out, I'm happy to fill the slot for you. So. I, I open it to everyone, so you know whoever wants to play, just just uh, send me a message. Um, exactly. So we're going to do this. Uh, let me pull this up here. I just finished watching your Jason Lee one. Oh yeah, yeah. that was a fun one. Yes, yeah, so I just finished watching that um, earlier tonight. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think there's a Paul Swain one that's just dropped today. So, yes, you know, yes, I've done I've done a number of them, and it's been really nice to be able to have so many different people. And now we're doing some doubles, and you know that's fun. It's a lot of lot of fun and a lot of learning. Um, yes, that's right. Okay, so here we go. Um, we've got the yeah. beautiful red gammoner board. Uh, the rain, uh, the skin is made by Rain. I'll put a link in the description. You're playing the blue checkers at the bottom. XG will be playing the white checkers at the top. It's a three-point match. And, of course, you can consult with me. Uh, did you prefer the pip count to be off, or you want to just leave it on? Um, let's leave it on. I think viewers prefer it on. So. Okay. So but, here we go. We'll start with the 5-3. Okay. So normally, I'll go to the 16 points because I don't like making um, – the bottom points early on but i really want to try have a good pr today so <laughs> I, i'm going to play a little bit more orthodox so let's just make the three points yeah i think so the, used to like in the past uh many years ago there used to be other alternatives such as bringing one down and either splitting the back checkers or bringing two down because of the very reason that, that you mentioned, this is too deep. Um, however, what happens when you go to here, it's partially escaping a checker, but if you were hit, you're back to square one without anything to account for it. The other thing is sometimes you'll split to the 18 point and that's actually nice because if you're missed, you have a coverage of all four quadrants of the board and it's very easy to make that anchor. When it's eight pips away like so, it's it's harder to make that anchor. And despite the fact that uh, this is a deeper point than you would like early in the game, uh, it's it's actually nice to have a two point board um, you have the opponent outboarded. And the other thing about this is, you know, once you have the three point, if you make the five point or the four point, uh, you have a pretty good structure because when you have what we call the rack, the six, five, four, that's a really good structure. Um, but if you have like the six, five, three, that's almost as good. So you're only like one roll away from that. So those are all the things that people talk a lot about the first rolls. Uh, anyway, let's continue. Okay, thanks. All right. Ah, so we would have been missed, but never mind. Yeah. Um, so, okay, this is interesting. I, I would like to start moving my back checkers. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to replace the spare on the eight, you know, so we can make those points. Um, I'm not going to be able to do both. So this is going to be hmm, three and two. Because the a part of me is thinking maybe split the back checker with one of the two dice and then drop one from the mid. So let's look at both both those options. This is one variation. Yeah. And then the other one would be like this. 
Yeah. The problem that I have with the going to the 22 point is it gives my opponent a very strong double five. Yep. Um, so that's happened to me in a few games when I've done this and you almost read, you're right on the back foot straight away when you've had both checkers hit and your opponents made three points. Um, I know it's only one roll of 36, but yeah, it's not very pleasant when that happens. Um, right. Let's let's go 21 and 11, please. Yeah. I think the other benefit of this is that you're, you're slotting the better point you want to make. Uh, because you'd rather have the anchor on the 21 than the 22. Additionally, having this checker back on the 11 versus the 10 provides more outfield coverage. Um, so white couldn't pass you to get to the 11 point. Um, additionally, you're not duplicating a lot of the numbers. So, for example, if you do this, you know, 4, 2, and 3, 1 are duplicated on both sides here, and the 6, 4 is duplicated there's a lot of there's a lot of duplication. Six three can escape, but it can also make this point. Uh, yeah. Whereas over here, you have different numbers to do all those things. That's correct. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, yeah, I think this is this is good. Okay. Six two. All right. Now we have some targets. This is the, so. This is what happens when you have this two point board against the one point board, and you have targets. You're going to be a good favorite in a hit, in a potential hitting exchange, which we may see. And you want to roll? Yeah, or you want to roll, please. It's, okay. It's, it's way too early to queue. Okay, yeah. you see. Yeah. All right. I'm quite a, an aggressive player by nature, really. Um, so I'm thinking here of almost blitz, trying to blitz. So six to two. And then either we do 13-9, so we put another builder down, and 11-7. Or we make the four point in addition to the two point. The disadvantage of this is whilst we have a nice strong board, we don't hit two checkers. Um, if our opponent fans, I mean, we could hit the second checker. So I'm trying to balance up, is it worth making the stronger board or is it worth putting two on the bar? So I think what the two plays have in common is the six to two. So we That's can start right. there and kind of look further. So one option would be to hitting two hitting two checkers uh but having a three point board versus hitting one checker and having a four point board of course having a four point board is stronger than having a three point board and of course having two checkers on the bar is better than having one checker on the bar uh the other thing about uh so let's say we do like this what are the possible good numbers? So you can come in with a 5-4 and a 4-1 and hit, uh, or also anchor with 5-2 and 6-1. Um, so those are those are pretty reasonable. Um, after this, there are no return shots, and it's very difficult to anchor. Mm. And, and we've got some builders on the 7-8-9 that we can continue attacking with. Yeah, if he um, if White dances here, I think if White dances in either case, it's probably too good. Yeah, mm. um, I do I do think that the the double hitting without yeah the double hitting gives us more flexibility going forward. Right. So we've got more dice that we can put to use, but. Um, I mean, I found a four-point board you can fan a few times, and your opponent can make significant progress. It's um, yeah, it's not it's not easy. I mean, this play we de-stack the thirteen. That's another little 
side advantage to this play. The, right, the so other thing about, um, so when you have a three point board and there's one checker on the bar, there are nine dancing numbers. But when there are two checkers on the bar, there are nine numbers that dance with both checkers. And there are many numbers that, you know, will come in with a single checker, but fail to anchor. Um, against a four point board with only a single checker in the air, 20 numbers come in and 16 dance. Um, so those are other things. I call it like double dancing numbers. If you have two on the bar and dance with both, for example, if you do like this, there are neither nine rolls where neither checker comes neither in. Neither checker comes in. Correct. All right. All right. So, let, 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 let's, I did say in the beginning about like being aggressive, um, and that means that the hitting both checkers was my initial vibe or feeling. So let's go with that one, please. Like this. Yes. Please. Yeah, this is a this is going to be a good one to analyze. Um, and the, I think yeah. I heard this one too. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Six three. So now oh, there's one of those nine numbers. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I we're definitely too good to to double here. So let's roll, please. Right. So sometimes the way I look at it is, say I'm white, would I take this? I mean, no. for sure not. So therefore, uh, it's either a double pass or too good to double. So how do we turn, determine if it's too good to double? Um, there are, I mean, I mean, what do we have to as, lose? As long as the opponent's got two on the bar, I think we, we are too good because... Uncubed gam un gammons are very likely natural yeah. gammons. So it, only if the opponent was to come in or make an anchor, then we might start thinking, uh, let's put some pressure on. Right. Also, uh, in terms of match strategy, uh, when you're thinking about whether it's too good or whether you're going for a, a gammon, whether it's a double gammon or an undoubled gammon, a natural gammon, you want to think about the score that you're going to get to if that happens. So in this case, it's three away, three away. If we do win a gammon with a center cube, uh, we'll be at the Crawford game, which is actually a particularly valuable score to be at because when you have one game where that you have a cushion where there's no cube, that's that's actually very good. So it is a valuable score to be at. So if you can try to get there, um, it's a good thing. So yeah, I think there are many reasons to to just play on. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's right. Four two. So that's okay. a good roll. It's a very good roll. So I'd like to make the five point. Yeah. I think okay. Any, very good. Anyone watching sees that as an obvious good move. Yeah. 3-2 again, so Fantastic. keep going. Yes, please. So what would you like? I mean, of course, if you roll a double four or a double two or something like that, that would be good. But other than that, what are you going to want to do on your next move? Um, Anything like a 6-4, six, 6-3, six, which allows me to bring further builders down into my second quadrant. Um, those are numbers I'm looking at. I'm not yet thinking of my back checkers yet because there's no immediate threat at the back. So I'm just trying to close out or make it harder for my opponent to come in. Right, right. Very good. Yeah, just keep your focus. Okay, so 3-1. Right, so... Um, as I said, I'd like maximum coverage to try and make the four point or to hit my opponent if they come in on the four so that they don't anchor. So the play which to me would best accomplish that would be 13, 10 and 7, 8. 8, 7, sorry. 8, 7, yeah. I yes. agree. Some people would be worried about the, the double four, which is it's good to think about all the upcoming roles, uh, but you also have to weigh it against the upsides, and the upsides are really huge. There are many more roles um, that get you a good roll here, whereas there's only one bad roll. That's correct. Okay, five one. Okay, so I'll bring this now. My strategy now could change to be like. Maybe 
if I can't make the four point, I'll just look to make the seven point because then I've got my opponent quite nicely trapped on the ace point. Now let's yeah. see what we roll. Or you can even possibly hit loose on the ace point and bring more builders down to try to just prevent him from anchoring. Yeah. 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 Okay, 5-2. So that's an so option. This, this is kind of what you just spoke about. Like, do we want our opponent to to anchor up? Um. Mm. The problem is if we go to the ace point, it's not going to be that easy to cover it. And all those builders that we brought in to try to make the four point, we, we're we going to lose them. Like let's say we roll a six or a nine. That's more builders gone and we still got that four point gap. Um. I understand what you're saying, but um, in the in the case of like a blitzing situation, so you know, I think we discussed this before, and you know this. There are four major strategies to win: a simple racing um, game, a priming game, an attacking or blitzing game, and a, a defensive holding game. And in this this case, basically, the focus is attacking or blitzing, and the goal is to close close the opponent out. And in a blitz. Uh, deeper points are not as invaluable as in a priming game. So, I mean, you have at least 17 numbers um, to close that with the six, and there's also the five, four, and double four. So that's 20 numbers to close it. Um, the other thing you want to think about is if you're trying to close, close the opponent out, um, you don't want them to anchor because that'll save a lot of gamuts, which is what we're kind of going for. Uh, so what 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 are your thoughts? So if we don't hit, then what what would you do? Yeah, that that's what do we do if we don't hit? That's a very good point as well. And I I don't see much else that we could do that's very positive if we don't if we don't hit. It's um. Yeah, what did XG want us to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think XG would probably want us to to hit on the ace point. So, yeah, um, for the reasons that we've already discussed, and for the lack of alternative viable constructive options, right? Um, I, I'm happy to go with this play, please. That's that's a very good concept that's very simple to understand. What are the alternatives? What's plan B? If you can't find something good, then that's that's a good indication. Yes, yes. Okay. Exactly. All right, six four. So now we have some pick and pass numbers. Yeah. And and because we've started hitting any slotted point, any any point we can hit now, we're going to do it. So let's see if we get a six or three. Yeah. Or even um by four. Hit it hit it loose, possibly. Yeah. Like right. Six. So the six the six hits. And um we're gonna to want to try cover. So I think we have to give up our midpoint for now. Yeah. Um, I don't, it, it's a golden rule almost, like, you know, preserve your midpoint when you still got back checkers. But in this situation where we are so, um, we're so strong and we're in an advanced state of blitzing, I think we have to just stick with our plan. And that means we use that checker. It's there to be used. So let's use it. Yes. Some people would play like, this and then maybe do this but then what happens is if white rolls a four it's just like anyone's game whereas after this if white rolls a four unless it's a double four or four one we still have good chances yeah if we didn't want our opponent to anchor on the one point we definitely don't want them to anchor on the four point right that's just so much better for them right okay Six one, so that's okay. Now, 
we need to at least think about a doubling decision. Uh, I think I think we're still too good. I think White would still happily drop here because right. we we could still close him out. Or yeah, I I think we're still too good for now. Right. Oh boy. So one. Um, seven, four, and then, ooh, it's so tempting to double, to then shift from the four to the ace point. So, so tempting. Yeah, let, let's, let, let's, let's carry on with the blitz. Let's see if we can make it all the way. <laughs> right. What would be, so what would be plan B? So one, two, and then coming down here. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I guess that would be a plan B. Yeah, but again, you don't want to, that's that's something really important to for people to emphasize. You don't want the opponent to anchor when you're going for a blitz. So this is this is really good. Yeah. Um, okay, four three. He comes yeah. in. All right, right. We roll on. Four. Okay, oh, that, that doesn't hit. Um. Hmm. Right, so 13-7, in case our opponent doesn't come in, we need more numbers that we can hit the slotted four point. So what do we do with the four? Um, I would say let's go 24-20, so that, you know, we if our opponent does come in or something like that, we can, and we get hit, we'll make a nice anchor in their home board. Right. Very good. I agree. All right. All right. Three, threes and fives, please. Okay. Please. please. Okay. Three. Yes. Seven, four, please. Okay. Oh, Look right. at Roll five. Up. So for some of the beginning players, what's the likelihood to cover this? Uh, double six covers, I think. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, Four, one, three, two, and any five. So yeah, fair, fair few. If I rolled a double two, I might even shift from the six to the four. Right. Um, so, and then bring some more checkers round. I might just consider that as well. So all fives, that's eleven numbers plus four, one, and three, two, that's four more numbers for fifteen, as well as double six. So that's sixteen. Um, almost half the time. Yeah. Good. All right, so oh, there five. There we go. That's the five. And now we need to try and prevent ourselves having any roles that will um that we can't play because then we'd have to crunch our home board. So this four, let's give it some thought. This is a very important four. If we play 2016, so double four is now pretty bad for us. Well, one, that's right. But any four we play will land up in the same boat. Even if we play 20 to 18, we'll still have double four problems. So let's look at other... Yeah, yeah I think we'll just... Double six, we're blocked there, yeah. But then we won't have to crunch with double six. I'm happy with 2218 because we can't protect ourselves against double four, but everything else we can play. Yeah. Um, one thing I sometimes do is say you start with this, and let's say you pick one of the plays. So let's say you pick this one. You look at each checker and see what are the numbers that are blocked. From here, twos and fours are blocked. From here, also twos and fours are blocked. From here, fives and threes are blocked, but twos and fours are playable. So yes. we're going to have problems with twos and fours probably. But if you do this one, what happens? From here, you have ones, fours, and sixes blocked. From here, it's ones, threes, and sixes. From here, it's twos and fours. So I think there's a lot, a little bit more flexibility with, with it. Was this the one that you, you mentioned, this one? You like this um, one? 
2218. I think that might have been the first one I, I recommended, yes. Yeah. Um the, yeah, but this one this one would then close on double sixes. Um yeah. Yeah, but double six are not a problem because we won't have no. to crunch our home board. Yeah. All right. Um let's go with this one then. Okay. Now four two. two. Okay, so this is gonna be like that. Is that a forced play, is it? Yeah. Oh obviously it's not forced because you can play it here, but there's nothing else you could do. You can't move this other than a two, and you can't move this checker, so it's gotta be here. So okay. now double twos and double fours are gonna crack in four two. Okay. I don't think we could avoid that. Yeah. So here I'm tempted to just play two from the 16 so that I've just got daylight with two checkers. Or you could do like this. Here you have different numbers that are blocked. Well, yes, fours are blocked. Double, double fours are still no four. good. Right. Whereas double. the way I suggested, we could play the double fours. That's right. Yeah, good, good point. Okay, so we'll do this. Okay. Now four three. Um, so I think twenty one eighteen is fine. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've got a four to play. Mm -hmm. Um, thirteen nine looks all right. Very good. Okay, double two. Eighteen sixteen. One. And then eleven five. Yeah. I mean, you can't get away with the, against double sixes unless you do something like this, but this is very bad. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you just move all, or like this will make double sixes safe because it's blocked, but you don't want that. I think these ones, this is what one thing Tim Cross was saying is the differences in, in these is very minute. Yeah, I made a mental note that any doubles, I'd try and give them a lot more thought this time round because that's yes, every, that's every time I play, that seems to be where more errors come from. It's it's actually something very common for for everyone. That's something I specifically learned one time from my friend John O'Hagan. He said, anytime you roll a double, stop, take a deep breath, and look at all the options because usually with doubles, there are many more. Uh, choices that are reasonable because usually a double is a good roll. So there are more reasonable options with a double than a non-double. Uh, yeah. Okay. So well, I think we, I think we've taken our time nicely today with our doubles. I think we've thought about it well. Um, let's just run from the sixteen. So five. And then 11, 8, because all our big doubles still play nicely after that. So what and I like to think about, six. Uh, what I like to think about in these types of positions is kind of what our goal is. Um, is our goal to win a single game? Is our goal to win a gammon? Is it to win a backgammon? Um, so here with two on the bar, Although a backgammon would win the match perfectly, it's pretty unlikely. Um, and when when you're going for that, you want to do something like this uh, because you'll be able to bear off more checkers before you break, uh, you open the board. Uh, however, if you're just looking for a single game, um, this kind of a play would be better because you're going to want to clear this. The other thing is, with two on the bar and all this outside anyway, we'll probably have good gammon chances regardless. So we're going to want to pre-clear this one. So I would agree with the 11 to 8. Yeah. Okay. All right, roll on. So double double one. one. So I think 8 to 6. And then just 9 to 7. Okay, so I, I think this is going to be a small difference anyway, but uh, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, we kind of want to pre-clear this, clear this one soon. So 
one option would be to do something like this. Um, and that, that's safe everywhere, and it kind of strips the six point. The other option would be to pre-clear and do something like this so that, you know, you kind of want white to come in with one checker uh, so he's not on the bar forever because there, there may be some variations where we're going to have an odd checker on the highest point, and that'll leave us some awkward numbers. Uh, but I think any of these options is is very reasonable. What what, what is your preference? Um, do the two from the six to the five. Um, right. So we've got two left to play. So we, um, I was just thinking. Let's say we do nine seven with our last two. Like if our opponent does roll a six, mm, yeah, no, it just I, I I can't necessarily see a downside to this, but it's just not like sitting right with me on a, <laughs> on, a on an instinct level. <laughs> I think if you're going to do this, you're going to want to bring one one off from here and do something like this because now double sixes or double fives will leave two checkers on this highest point. Whereas if you do this and you roll a double six or double five, you'll have that awkward uh, structure with three on yeah. the highest. Um, but the the other thing would be to one, two, three, four, and this strips the six point and you're ready to kind of go after that. Yeah. All right. Let Let's settle for this one then. Okay. It's going to be a very minor difference anyway. So now I'll just say nine six and four off. The other option would be to try to clear the six point and just not put an extra checker there and play something like this, or now even do something like this because this leaves nice a nice distribution so that. All our roles play well, even double six, double five, six five, six four, five four, they all play well. And two one. <laughs> two one is fine. Even if our opponent rolls a single six. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's the only one. Yeah, yeah. That uh, so that's uh yeah, eleven times uh two, twenty two out of twelve ninety six. Um but I think this is fine. This is Fine. We'll do this. Okay. So five two like that. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Now double one. So now I would say six to five, and uh, may and four to two. What I what I think about in these is, so of course before the roll with this roll, what's your objective? You want to break the six point right yes okay what's going to be your next objective it's going to be to break the five point right it will be oh so, so move two straight over you can That's, yeah i think this is fine so what happens here is if you have four here you're going to keep a five point board for longer and that's going to keep the opponent on the bar for longer so what would we prefer? Would we prefer the opponent to be on the bar for longer or to come in sooner? I mean, the the, the benefit of staying on the bar longer is you may win a backgammon, but that's like, you have to get really lucky for that to happen. Um, if we want to win a backgammon, maybe we just do four off and we keep our, our closed out board. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's gonna be too risky because then you're you like you roll a six one afterwards or something like that you're gonna be in pro trouble. Okay. So we'll so, do this, and then so it doesn't matter. Okay. Let I I like the idea of uh, five to four. I need to get into this a bit more. Okay. So we'll try this. Okay. I tell people sometimes I'm wrong. Yeah. 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 Okay. Three. Um, two. Three, two. Uh, just clear the five. So what are the bad rolls here? Double four, five, and six. That's three numbers, right? Yeah. 
And what about here? I think it's the same three numbers, right? It is. Okay. But now he's more likely to come in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No okay. more risk. So now we're just trying to win a gamma. XG is trying to save the gamma. And we're trying to win the gamma. That will help us a lot. If he stays here, we might want to back him. I don't think he's going to. <laughs> oh, he came out. He teased us. XG teased us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's continue. So now we're ahead uh, 2 0 Crawford, one away, three away Crawford with a 5 2. Okay. Um, in the last game, I mentioned how scared I am of double fives. So I don't want to do 24 22. So just two down from the 13, please. Okay. Oh, you were right. <laughs> you knew something. <laughs> Look All at right. that. I um, said it's always 2020. Okay, 4 yeah. 1. Yeah, sure. seven point. Yes, please. Sure. Okay, so now. Oh, this is not very pleasant. If we play 6 1 and 13 11, at least we duplicate ones. Um, I, 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 I can't see anything else to do myself. What about? Yeah, I guess I guess it's okay. This one, um, I mean, it does unstack this point by putting it in a place where you would rather make it. Um, it also keeps white back here um, and doesn't give him the opportunity to come in further. Uh, it also duplicates wow. rolls like three one, which would make this, or or five three, which would make that. Oh. I'm buying that. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. The other would be the ultra conservative, something like this, but that's too too inflexible. Too passive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we may get an anchor. So here's the five. So the nice thing is this is the Crawford game, so we don't have to worry about being cubed out. Correct. And being being cubed out, you don't have to worry about. And the other thing at this score is if we lose a gamut versus losing a single game, it's not a big difference. The same difference. So we, yeah. we can play more aggressively without, you know, worrying about that. Yeah. I think the only reasonable six at this point is eight to two. Eight to two. What about, yeah. what about um, something like this? I mean, we will lose more gamuts because they're double hits. Um, but as I said, it doesn't matter. So when you do this, how is this going to possibly benefit us in the future? I mean, I can see like here, if we're missed, we have pretty good chances of making an anchor. But if we do this, what is, what is going to be our game plan for the next roll? You see, if we come out 24-18, we'll be very tempted to then make the 18 point. But we're well behind in the race. So I'd rather just stay deep for now um, because yeah. we're so far behind. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think also if double hitting numbers just really give XG the advantage because we've got no home board. So XG can be really aggressive towards us, and they might XG might close us out. Maybe how we closed it out in the last game. Okay, so we'll try this. We'll see what happens. Okay, we'll see what XG thinks in the analysis. Yeah. Okay, four two. Now, double six. So. So we're thirty five behind. This is twenty four. So this actually helps us in a racing sense. Um, my instinct here would be 24-18 and then 28. Um, I feel like 
we're not too far off trying to race. And this is, you know, yeah, this is reasonable. I, I think this, yes, yes, I agree. I think this is a very good point. And a lot of the novice players have this mentality of when you're behind in the race, you should maximize contact as much as possible. So they might just keep these back checkers here and play, you know, I don't know, something in here or maybe out here or something like that. Uh, while that is true, uh, you want to keep your options open because here we're not that far behind in the race, number one. Number two, this 18 point is has good contact with the opponent's midpoint. So that's going to be good for a holding game. In addition, the opponent has the 15 point, which is going to be clear. And having this 18 point gives us a other good option. So it's not as much of a committal play. So if we roll big like double five or double four and we go ahead in the race, then we're able to clear this pretty well. So yes. this is, yes. I think I agree with this for sure. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so now see duplicated the fours. Okay. But six four does still hit and cover. So now we've got to work out is that what we want to do? We are still outboarded, and our opponent will have a shot at. Um, but it sorts us out in a racing sense. If we hit now. So let's play 1814 and 82 and let's see what that does to the race. Okay, so that puts us in front, but once any six, three, six, four, six, five, six, any five, two, because we block twos on the two point, right. but our opponent can hit us on the 14 point. So they've still got twos. Um, four numbers. If I said to you, um, if you if you clear it, no. right click it, please. If we did eighteen fourteen and fourteen eight, then whilst it's the same number of shots, I'm just. I'm almost happier being hit on the two than on the 14, because if we're hit on the 14, our opponent's activating a builder checker. But this one, you get all, you get the twos plus the sixes and ones. And there's only one dancing number, whereas the other way, there are four times as many dancing numbers. Okay. Uh, or the other thing would be is to just like play like this. We're only seven behind in the race. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Do we have to hit? Uh, and then the other thing, as I mentioned, I, I hate to repeat myself over and over, but at this score, it doesn't I mean, of course, if we do this and play loose, we're going to lose more gammons if we get return hit, but that's not very important to us right now. Uh, if it was DMP, I think this would be the kind of play and at this kind of score you kind of want to play like dmp mode so this is a, this will be a good one to look at i'll give you the final option yeah okay mm. all right let, let let's go for 18 14 and 82 Okay. Six two, there we go. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Four one. So four and yeah. then just one. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay. now we're like playing uh, what's a gammon safe. We just want to get home and win now. Yeah. As safe as possible. Okay. Five one. Notice that came in with the five, not the one to maximize the contact because the race is relatively close. Yes, that's okay. a very good point. Yeah. Six four. Um, 
My instinct here is to play seven, one, and six, two. Um, I don't want to get rid of landing spots by clearing either the seven or eight point. But yeah, right. like, you know, so uh, we, we, we don't want to give a shot. So we can't move from the 14. Right. So, yeah, I, I think I agree. I think just looking at this for, for kind of the novice players that are learning, uh, at this point in the game, the goal is just to bring things home safely. We're ahead in the race. We don't want to leave shots. We don't want to be hit back. So although we can try clearing like this and leave a shot, we don't we don't need to give that unnecessary risk. And then the same with this kind of play. And but at the same time, uh, clearing this is another point to be clear. They say a point a point clear is a point not to be feared. However, it does decrease the landing spots for these, as you mentioned. So, you know, I think this is just a almost a no brainer. Okay, it's not a very pretty play, but it's no. a play that needs to be made. Yeah. What did you say about the pretty women when you come out of jail last time? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, like just don't go for the the first thing you see. <laughs> Hold out a bit. <laughs> okay, now double one. Okay. So here I would like to do fourteen thirteen because now we're clearing a point that could be tricky to clear. Then it's ugly, but two checkers to the one point because yeah. I, do, I don't want to sacrifice any of the seven or eight points. Right. Very good. All right. Five, four, just well, the five, and then... Six to two, why not? Yeah. It why doesn't not? get a crossover. It strips this point, but at least it makes the board point in case there's a hitting exchange. Yeah. Okay. Like, let's say we roll double four now. We could hit with confidence because we don't have the open right. on. Right. The other way, double four would be one, two, three, and then four. And you'd leave all this then, here. But then we buried a few checkers. Right, right, right. Okay, so five, four. Yes, please. Okay, so that caught him up in the race. Um, eight, five, seven, five. They've got to come in anyway, so. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'd say two down from the 13. Yeah. And uh, again, 13-4. Um, yeah. We're going to try and put checkers where they thin so that when we're bearing off, we've got right. Um, so, like nine three, and then for the three, let's just go eight five. Yeah, and stacks this point. Yeah. Uh oh. oh, oh, oh. XG is not Four short. Four one. Up. Yeah, oh. that's an obvious one. So now this one, the five. And with the five off with the six, yeah. I'll let you autopilot this part. Autopilot this part. And it looks like we've got a big DMP game coming up. Unless we perform. No. Oh, one pip away. <laughs> All right. So now it's a... Uh, so we have a free drop. That's so correct. With the 2-1... Well, let's play the two, and then we see what the bot does, and then it, we can decide if we want to drop or not. Um, so let's do 24, 23, and 13, 11. Yeah, that's perfect. There, a lot of people just kind of naturally play this. However, uh, one time Kit Woolsey wrote an article exactly about this play, whereas there's no upside because you're going to be doubled and then you could you could be hit. So there's there's no upside. Um, you have to do this. Will XG cube us before it rolls? Of course. 
Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what we played. We'd be facing a cube. Correct. Mm. And now mm. we take, right? I don't know. Two one is probably one of the worst starting roles we could have had in a racing sense. So it is a free drop. Maybe, like, I don't know, maybe we could get to start with 6-5 or 3-1 or something if we pass. The other the other option is 50% of the time the opponent is going to win the opening roll next. Um, the only time it's a free drop is when you when you open with a 4-1. This is, uh, it's probably, a, well, I don't know if it's a small error, but it's a medium error. This, this is correct to take. Okay, let's take them. So six four. We replicate to make the bar as well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's that's actually good for us. Yeah. I don't mind that. Okay, one's in. Can I get another one in? Nope. Oh. Um, thirteen seven. Yep. Oh, look at that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, three. Eight two. Yeah, you're gonna have to stay back. All right. Seven two and twenty two twenty one. One of the things we need to think about is do we need this anchor? Gammon losses don't matter. Um, but what's the alternative? This yeah, this, that would that would be the alternative if we don't anchor. This will be a good one to analyze. I mean, double thing, six, double three, double two. These would not be very nice for us. The the other thing about the anchor. So one thing when when gammon losses do not matter, anchors are devalued because anchors help you save gammon. So that's that's not an issue here. However, the other thing is this looks like it's going to be a holding game because we're behind approximately 30 pips in the, in the race. When you have this point here, and now after clearing the midpoint, white's going to have to clear the 10 point or our 15 point, which is six away from the anchor. And that's very difficult, especially when there are gaps here. So this may prove to be valuable. Yeah. 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 My instinct was to just anchor up and hope we get a shot. Yeah, we, we probably will. Okay. okay. Yes, please. Okay. Wow, nice, nice rolling. Now five one. Um, eight three six five. Okay. So now he's just gonna leave blots. Double one. Oh, we can cover both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he cleared that point. Four three. You can make the four points. Oh. Six two, so We're six. Down. The other one down. Okay. Six four, all the way. Eleven, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's that okay. Was... It's okay. Oh, double six. Okay, so it's going to be a race. The so we're down forty five. We can do keep one like that. We're going to be down twenty one in the race. Although he has some very checkers here. Yeah, I think we have to. Yeah, what's the alternative would be to do something like this? And now it does have, XG does have gaps. Yeah. Right. I think I like this one. What do you think? I, I actually like the look of running all the way. Um, because so when I look at this picture here, I'm like, okay, XG will get two checkers in. We'll get two checkers in. XG will take two while we still bring our last two in. But then every time XG rolls a four or a three, he misses. So Unless he fills the gap. With a five yeah. or a four. 
So here are the other things, like when you look at the eyesight, um, let's count the penalty. One, two, three, four, five. That's 10 pips, 11 pip penalty. And we have a uh, two pip penalty for the crossovers. So that's a net of nine. Um, so that's 21 minus nine. It's like thir being 13 pips down at 52 to 65. Actually, it's going to be a little bit more so. Okay. Uh, if, okay. All right. Let's 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 play the one where we leave one man behind. It also slows down the Baron because if he rolls like a 5-4 or a 4-3 or a 4-2 or a 4-1, he's going to have to kind of play off here and dump more to the deep that's point. A very, that's a very good point, yeah. All right, so 5-3. And now I don't think, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if bearing a checker to the one point is is worth it. Because what 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 number are we looking for? A four two? No, only a six two. Six only two double four double five double six. Okay. Uh, we oh we're still twenty one behind. Are, are we going to win if we race? Probably not. Are we going to win if we stay? <laughs> I, I think that if we stay, it's still going to be a race. There are five numbers, and we hit 11 times out of those. That's 55 out of 1296. So are you are you recommending we stay one more time, yeah? Um so here here's the advantages. We're we're kind of buried in the race anyway. Uh but if we do this, we gain a little bit in the race, we start bringing things home, we do get two crossovers, um, and we don't bury the checkers here. So uh it's going to be hard to race. So what's the likelihood that it's going to be a race? If, uh, you know, aside from 6-2 and those three doubles, that's five numbers, the other 31 times, it's pretty safe. So I would rather have a little bit of a better benefit here um, after 31 times than the possibility of five times like this. probably not going to make much of a difference because our winning chances are so low anyway. Mm. I, I think 21 is too substantial to hope to overcome. And I think our only chance it's, it's, uh, is it's to stay. Good. Okay. Yeah. So we'll stay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, now this is what happens. I think it's just like, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Two high numbers. Oh, no. Three, two. Stick around. Yeah, we 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 have to now. Okay, that's that's it. Unless we win, um, I'll do the rest on autopilot. Then I'll pause it, save it, and then um, we'll look at the analysis. Yeah, sure. Sometimes it's just nothing you can do. Right. Okay, I'll pause it. We'll analyze it. Very good. So uh, in, I have about 30 minutes. That should be fine. So let's just go through this. The 5-3 was clear. And the 3-2, nice. That was a good play. Okay. And it looked like it prefers that over the other split. Yeah. Yeah, for the reasons that we mentioned and this was the double four that we were looking at it looks like the two plays were close making a four point board or not yeah yeah it's definitely one of those definitely. 
I mean, 2420 just doesn't bring extra boulders into oh, the no. second quadrant. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So then here we were clearly too good to double. So that's good. And the 4-2 was clear. Uh, and then he danced. And then the 3-1, nice play here. Just spreading out the builders like this. Yeah. It wasn't too big. Right. Then he came in. And then we had this one. The cube was still too good to double here. And for the move, the 5-2 uh, was correct to hit again you as we also have been a blunder definitely yeah. well it looks like came up with a blunder here okay let's look at this one looks like xg preferred this one turns out you win more gammons there too huh interesting because you're not losing the games that's very interesting because as as we discussed, like we we simply didn't want XG to anchor. So we went all out. Yeah, like this play. I think once you have the five point board, it's it's okay to let him anchor because it's uh, unlikely to anchor. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. What what if we had like let me put this in here. What if these back checkers were here? What do you think? So if the back checkers haven't moved, then it's they more it's more our position's a bit stiffer. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You have to do something. Okay. So, uh, to to be honest, I I'm not not in agreement with that analysis. There, I I still think I'd still play ten four again. Um, yeah, we'll have to look at. Uh, maybe we put it on the forum and see what insights other people might have on this. Market. Will be a good one, and I can look at the dice distribution now. If you want, we can. Put this in. Okay. Well, what's this? The okay. We can't so, see what you're doing at the moment. Right? Yeah, I'm going to pull it up in just a second. Let me... Okay, so this is play A, which results in this. This is play B, which results in this. So... Sorry. Okay. So this is what happens. The the fours are much better. If if uh, white rolls a four, it's obviously much better if you're in oh sorry. Like this rather than here because now we get hit. Okay. You see those fours are bad over here, and this is the big difference. Uh, now, the other thing is, if you see like the fours, no, this is not this is not the right one. Sorry. I'll cut that there's, out. There's okay. an analogy that I think of sometimes, which is the dog walking over a bridge with a bone in its mouth and it sees its own reflection in the water and it thinks that that's another dog with a bigger bone and it drops what's in its mouth to try and chase the second dog which is only its reflection and it lands up losing the bone that it had 
If I apply that story to this position, I come to the conclusion that we have a chance to make a five-point board. If we don't take it, we might have four checkers back and only a four-point board. Right. So it's it's like not just being almost thankful for what we've got, not trying to be too greedy. So maybe that's like the moral of the story that I can take away from what XG is saying there. Yes. So here what it looks like is you see all the ones are huge, big differences. You know, over here, if we play like this and white rolls a four, it's bad. If we play like this and white rolls a four, it's still bad. But if we play like this and right roll right rolls a one, like a two, one, three, one, five, one, or six one, it's actually good. But mm. if we play like this and now white rolls two, one, three, one, five, one, or six one, it's actually very bad. So that's what this is showing here. The difference is huge. Like a double one is a huge swing. Uh, fair and, enough. And then so you see like these these ones, they dance, but we get hit, and those those are huge swings. Um, and then in terms of the subsequent rolls, so our next rolls become really good after we play like this, because we have a pretty good diverse, diversity of uh, checkers and numbers that will bring things home or um, hit. Whereas here, it's... It's going to be tough because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blots. That's the other thing we didn't think about. Um, if we get hit and don't roll something good and then white comes in on the second chance with the second one, uh, then we have a lot of work to do. Too many uh, blots. Too yeah. many blots. Uh, so okay. the, eight, the, the, the move before, it was correct to slot, but this time it's not. And that's why playing like XG is tricky because sometimes you're supposed to do something and other times you're not. And it's about understanding the wins. Right. So here, in this case, when you hit, this is the resulting position. You have two on the bar, four-point board with one blot in the board. But here, if you do that, you have two on the bar with a four-point board, but two blots in the in the board. That just gives them so many more numbers to just hit. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's a good one. Okay. That's a good lesson. Yeah. So this one, this one was uh correct, the double three where we came in and pointed on head. And then let's see what happened with the six four. Well, that's quite a big error, 79. Wow. Interesting. It liked the 13-9 rather than spreading things out. I think the same. it's the same idea, just too many blots. The 22, 16, 13-9. It kind of consolidates things, duplicates a lot of the entering and hitting fours, which is nice. Let's, let's, let's look at the figures associated with it. Um, the play we made wins 74.9. Yep. The play that XG rates the best is 76.6. .6. So even though it's a whopping 96 blunder, we didn't really sabotage our winning chances that much. For XG, that's a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see I can see this now uh, because so the gammons are higher with our play. Uh, the gammons are are slightly higher, um, but also the gammon losses are higher. So if you look at this, what are the rolls that come in and hit? Double four and four two, right? Yes. What about here? Four three, three four, four five, five four, one, four one four two four three four six can hit from here. It's four, just so six. so many. Any four basically. Yeah, yeah. 
So I think um, I fail to consider the number of blots. So that, that's something important to think about, the blot count. Uh, OK. So this one, yes, we had to we had to just continue. And again, this one, you only leave one blot. But then let's see what happened with this 5-4 here. Oh, OK. So like the other one. OK. It did like this play. OK, so this one's. Give me just a second. I'll put this one into the dice. That, that looks that, that looks so innocuous, and yet it was such a big punishment. Yep. We'll find out exactly why. Now, with this one, you can't do the XG dice distribution because that's only one roll. That's why this one is so good. Let's see how the second rolls play. Okay. I I feel something's wrong with your image because oh. you've got two checkers on the 24. And... Oh, this is the other one. This is the other one. Let me go back to this. Here. You see this? Okay. So this is play A resulting in this position. Yes. And this is play B resulting in this position. Okay. So... Do you see this now? It's the double five that's big. So let's go back and look. How does double five play here? One, two, three, and four. How does double five play here? I don't see that. Exactly. That's strange. Do I have the wrong position up? Uh, maybe I have the wrong one up. Let me let me try it again, because that seems strange to me. Uh, I think I've got it, Alex. Yes. When we when we play twenty two eighteen, double one's a very bad roll for us. Uh huh. So we're looking at all the bigger doubles. Ah uh, yes. But this sort of forced us to crunch like this. Whereas when you play twenty sixteen, you can still play double ones. Yes, that was something wrong. There you go. It's not the double five yep. as much as the double. That was that was the wrong position I had. Okay. Okay. Here's the. This is the double one and the six one and double three, and three one. So this let's go back and look. So over here. Uh, double one is bad. Three one is also bad because you have to play three here and one here. And then next year, double ones and threes are bad. Um, and six one. Look at that. Six one. I, I can't see the board. All I'm seeing is your, your, your roll equity. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Let me. Here we go. Do you see this? Now I can see it. So yeah. now this is the play that we made. So how does 6-1 play next? Yes, that's a problem as well. Yeah. 6-1 and then... 3-1 and double one. Three one, double one and double three. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That was, was a hard one to see. But I was thinking of the big doubles, like five fives and four fours. And right. Stuff, and we didn't think of the little one. Which Yeah. Well, yeah. that's good. Now, next time we know. Next okay. time we know. So the four, two, everything else was, was 
pretty clear here that the five three was yeah you made you made a good point about the upcoming double fours and then none of this really mattered let's see what yeah. happened here oh okay so what did we do here this one was the nine six four off the pre-clearing was close it wins more games, fewer gammons, and fewer backgammons. Um, and then what else was here? This one was also interesting. These these ones were all very close, you see. Nine, six, and five, four. Yeah, yeah. These are all very close. It's not it's not a big deal. And then back here, yeah, it, it didn't really matter. Um, okay, so let's see what do we have here, and then the double one. These ones look like. Oh, it looks like it did prefer four two. A few more gammons. Okay. Okay. Not a big deal. And then after this, it was just nothing special. All right, so let's go to this one. The five two small small error. It's better to do that, but he did roll double fives, um, and then the four one was clear. Then the five two. This was the one that was you were thinking about, right? Yes, and then you recommended uh, doing six four, and we went with that one. Yeah, it looks like this one that you were looking at, like this. It just kind of gives up too much. Um, just a blot here, blot here with this back here. And and I like what you said when you're like, what do we want the uh, uh, blot on the 1.4? We yeah. don't want the one point, so let's go with the four. Yeah, yeah you'd, I mean, you don't want to blot anywhere, of course, but if you're going to leave a blot, you'd rather leave it on a point you want to make and not leave two blots. Now, that was the argument that swayed me the most. I was like, yeah. Let's yeah. stay away from the one this early. Yeah. Uh, these two were very close. Look at that. All right. So in the interest of time, yeah, even, little... even though we're behind in the race, going to the 18 point was not the end of the world. Right? No, no, it wasn't. We'll move along a little bit faster in the interest of time because my next appointment is coming up. This double six was pretty straightforward after we discussed it. Um, and then the, yeah, this was this was right by a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we, we went with the right play. We had a lot of six fours and they were all quite tricky. Yeah. And the four one was clear. Let's see this six four. I slightly prefer clearing the eight point. But these were very close. I think it's within, if it's within 10 milli points, I don't make a big deal of it. Yeah, sure. Now, this double one. Wow, look, it wanted to point on head and make the board. And that only leaves four or three to hit. You know, that's not it's not terrible when you look at it now. <laughs> yeah, right? We it's just wanted to bring things home. <laughs> you do have to go slower. Okay. It's one of those doubles. So we, <laughs> one of those pesky doubles we didn't think of. I know, I know. And look, it preferred to just come in with the 5-4 all the way deep. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we had here. The three, two, okay. Nothing really mattered here. Yeah. So then it was DMP. The two one. Oh, is it right to slot here? Okay. My mistake. So this was a this was a take. Um, and then the six four was clear to make this point. And the six five was forced. These ones were forced. And this one was just to bring this down with a six. And then we danced over here. And then the 6-3, yeah, we had to stay back. So the 8-2 to two was right there. And then and this, this one is the one. Interesting. Did we anchor or, yeah, should we have anchored or not? Yeah, 
I think you just had to anchor because it blocks this blocks this point like we were discussing. That's right. And then the five one that was right to just keep things back. And the double one. This one didn't really matter, but. Oh, you you think making two points is obvious, but obviously not. Seven four and six five. It's just preparing to build the board further, as okay. opposed to this. Yeah, it's it's not a big deal that one. And this one was clear to make that point, and then just continuing here. Six four. So, when did we have this decision? The double six. It's now. To run or not to run. Oh yeah, R running all the way was was a blunder. Big time. And this one, this one, yeah, we did have to stay. Yeah. Although well, it wasn't terrible, and then. Couldn't really do anything here. And uh, that was basically it. Yeah. So we won the match. Well played. Very good. No, we lost. We lost. Oh, we lost the match. Ah, we lost. Yeah. Winning and losing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, you play, when I play on these, it's like I don't really care about winning and losing. Um, you just try to learn. And when you learn, you're able to make better decisions later. Next time yeah. you run into a similar situation, and that will increase the likelihood that you will win when it matters, if you're playing for money, if you're playing in a tournament or something like that. Um, so that was good. I really enjoy playing with you and playing with others. We, you know, the whole discussion is very interesting and educational, um, and I'm well, happy to have you. Uh, thank you, Alex. I'm very happy to join you again. Um I was going to say we might have lost the match, but I won because I've learned something. And I know that I'll go into future games and future positions with more insight and thoughtfulness as a result of these uh, plays. And that's why playing backgammon is the best way to learn, because the more experience you get, the more you try to revise and look things over, it will just make you a better player in the long run. Yes, yes, absolutely. I agree. Um, so good. I'll go ahead and analyze it a bit further and process it. And maybe we'll put some of these positions up in the in the forums and go from there. Uh, any other final comments before we conclude this video? Um, no, nothing except thanks. And um, I hope you have a lovely weekend. Likewise. And, uh, it's a pleasure. I'll, I'll speak to you soon. On the All forum. right. We'll be in touch. Oh, thank you. Thank you again, John. And thank you to the viewers. For watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as the both of us did. Please like and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. My book, Backgammon and Back Game Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email is in the description. And John, you also give lessons too, is the best way to contact you via Facebook. Yes. It, it okay, is. very yeah, good. Yeah. So contact John on Facebook. I look forward to seeing everyone in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.